but this question I think should make everyone think. After Hashem picks Moshe, Moshe finally agrees to have his brother speak for him, but he's going to be the one that speaks to Hashem, mm-hmm. and then he's going to, and then Moshe is going to speak to Aaron, and Aaron is going to speak to Paro and to the nation of Israel. Mm-hmm. Hashem picks Moshe Rabbeinu to be the most important person in history. He didn't pick everybody else. He didn't pick you or me. Mm -hmm. Pick Moshe. It says here in Pasuk 24, chapter 424. Translation, it was on the way, they left Yitro's house, go to Egypt. <coughs> Moshe just had a son, right before he left Yitro's house, he had a son, his second son. Mm-hmm. Eliezer is his name. we we'll find out later on, but I know. So it says... He left his house, says, it was on the way, in the lodging, he went to a hotel, that Hashem encountered him, encountered Moshe, and sought to kill him. Hashem sent Malach HaMavet to kill Moshe. So Tzipora took a sharp stone and cut off the foreskin of her son and touched it to his feet, to meaning to Moshe's feet, and she said, you, to the baby, you caused my bridegroom bloodshed. Meaning you almost caused my husband to die. So he released them. This Malach HaMavet released Moshe. Then she said, a bridegroom bloodshed was because of circumcision. Interpretation. Moshe left Yitro's house and he says, listen, I just had a, bo- a new baby. I know that Hashem said that after, on the eighth day I have to give him Brit Milah. But if I have the Brit Milah, I have to delay the trip that Hashem told me to take right now by three days. So I'm not listening to Hashem. But if I do listen to Hashem and I take him, I'm going to be in a desert. And giving a Brit, doing a circumcision in a desert is very dangerous. That's why during the 40 years Am Yisrael was in a desert... No one did Brit Milah, which is the reason why as soon as we got to Israel, Joshua made a Brit Milah for the entire nation of Israel. A lot of Orla, a lot of blood, a lot of big mitzvah, Kiddush Hashem. So Moshe Rabbeinu right now is trying to use his logic. He says, if I take my son, newborn son, in the desert and I give him Brit Milah, do a circumcision, he's going to be in danger. Hashem doesn't want my son to die, so I'll delay it. Once I get to Egypt, then I'll do the Brit Milah. So on the eighth day, he's at the hotel. Mm-hmm. And he's planning, he's getting closer to, uh, to Egypt, but he's, it's that day, the eighth day. And he decides that he's not going to make the Brit Milah on that day because it's dangerous. And he's going to wait until he gets to Egypt in a few more days. Hashem that has picked Moshe Rabbeinu to be the leader of Am Yisrael, the most important person in history, sends Malach HaMavet to kill him. Why? Not because he, di- he wasn't going to do the Brit Milah, but because he postponed the timing. Mm-hmm. Just the timing of the mitzvah. Not that he didn't do the mitzvah. Not that he didn't keep the Brit. Not that he was violating the Brit. He had his Brit. His wife was ca- kosher. He was kosher. He was righteous. His other son was had his Brit. This son, he was planning to do the Brit, so because Hashem knows his thoughts. We actually learned from this parasha, one of the sources that we know that Hashem knows our thoughts, because it says, and, and Moses thought. And one of the things, we know that Hashem knows our thoughts. So Hashem knew that Moshe was planning to have the Brit in a couple of days. So he was just postponing it, postponing the time. And he sent Malach HaMavet to kill him for postponing it. So my question is to you and anyone that's watching. If Moshe Rabbeinu was the most important man in history, he got the Torah, he spoke to Hashem face to face, 
He went to Mount Sinai. He went to Olam Abba. He saw the future. He saw the past. No one is ever going to be like Moshe. No one ever was like Moshe. Right. Mm -hmm. And Hashem sent Malach HaMavit to kill him for postponing a mitzvah. For postponing a brit. So why is it so hard for Am Yisrael to believe they're not postponing a brit, but violating a brit? Whether it's the Brit Milah or the Brit of Shabbat or the Brit of Tefillin <coughs> gets a much harsher punishment than death. If anyone was supposed to get a free pass, it would be Moshe Rabbeinu. Because number one, he was planning on doing the mitzvah anyway. Mm -hmm. Hashem knew that. Number two is Moshe Rabbeinu. Here we have, not only we're not Moshe Rabbeinu, but we're not even keeping the mitzvah. We're not even planning on doing it. Someone is Bechalel Shabbat. He's not planning on keeping half the Shabbat. He's planning on going to the beach. And then after that to the movies. And after that to the club. And after that, same thing next week. Mm -hmm. So he's violating the breed. He's not delaying it or postponing it. So if Hashem is outright telling you over here, he sent Malach HaMavet to kill him. And the only thing that saved him was that his wife, Tsipora realized it and, did and she, did, she did the breed herself. And that saved Moshe Rabbeinu's life. So that's the thing. Delaying a mitzvah got Moshe Rabbeinu almost killed. Violating a breed. Hashem Erachem. Bezat Hashem, this gets people to think of how serious Shabbat, Tfilin, and all of the mitzvot are. And uh, with Hashem, we'll learn much more next week. Baruch Adonai Le'olam. Amen. 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 Amen.